Good morning, good evening guys and girls. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nathaniel. Thank you guys for coming back to my channel once again because you guys are always freaking awesome. I just want to do a quick little video today on how to catch a fire hydrant. Now this is just for entertainment purposes only. Uh, this is not meant for any form of educational, just whatever you guys uh, intend to want to take for what it is. So, first and foremost, you need to have your fire truck and have a designated fire hydrant to whatever you guys are going to be connecting. Alright, so I apologize about the interruption. Some guy decided to ask me if I had a quarter. So, you're going to take your hydrant basket and you're going to make sure you shut your compartment. You're going to take it back to your hydrant. Never run, you always walk. So the second thing you're going to do is to get back to your designated hose, whatever you're going to lay, regardless if it's 3 inch, 5 inch, or whatever. Usually the biggest you'll have is 5 inch. Uh, generally you don't go past 6 inch for a lot of departments, but we carry 5 inch. So we'll grab our 5 inch here, grab it off the truck, and then at that point you'll wrap it around your hydrant. You'll stand clear. You'll go motion to your driver. You know, you'll give him some form of sign. Uh, you always refrain from saying go because go and no is both very, uh, they sound very similar. So that's why you don't dictate both of them. So once you are to your hydrant and once the truck has started laying, uh, I think it's also important to note that you won't always be connecting your hydrant even though if you connect it. Uh, sometimes this is this very rarely happens for a lot of rural places but if you have a second new engine crew coming in you know, you'll just lay a five inch to your first truck and then you'll leave your hydrant basket for the second crew to connect while the first crew goes in and starts fighting fire. So I just think that's very important to uh, note as well. So we're going to start by taking two ends off. We'll take a smaller end off here. And then we'll take our big end off. So the reason why you do this, um, because you know, the big end of the five inch will connect here. You're going to finger your hydrant, make sure there's nothing in it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put our gated, we're going to put some form of a gated a valve on this end of the fire hydrant of whatever direction you're laying your hose to. <clears throat> and the reason for this is because if you need to connect another line or something happens to the five inch, uh, you can Instead of shutting down your whole hydrant, you can now connect another hose here to something else. So, we carry three different fittings for our fire hydrants. The reason why we have three is because there are different hydrants throughout the county. Which kind of sucks, but it just is what it is. I'm going to try my hardest not to take that apart. I really don't want to put it back together. I'm not going to charge it or anything. We're just going to kind of be demonstrating. So, I, okay, I take that back. I guess we only have two. So this one's meant for, it'll connect to a uh, piece like this. I'm sorry, to this end will connect to that. And you can still flow five inch out of that small fitting. So that's the designated purpose of what that's for. Uh, one of these we had to buy for a special hydrant due to like a commercial area in our uh, jurisdiction uh, that has... A special fitting. Cool thing is a lot of new fire hydrants that are coming out now are actually coming with pre-built um, pre five inch fittings for these. So that will save us time and having to connect to uh, connect these additional fittings to the hydrant. So we'll screw that on there. Okay. So then we will start, the second thing we'll do is we'll flow our hydrant, we'll open it up, make sure we'll clean it, see all that gunk, you don't want all that in your tank, 
because that'll ruin tanks. So we'll shut it back off. You always stand behind the hydrant. The reason why you stand behind the hydrant is just in case if one of these uh, valves would blow off, you would have a busted kneecap. So then at that point, you would obviously undo that, but like I said, I'm not going to because I don't want to connect it back together. <coughs> so you get the proper fittings. Well, you line the fittings up and then you'll hear a little snip like that and that'll indicate that everything's on there. Uh, you shouldn't go past anything that's usually hand tight um, because at that point you know, it's just harder to get off. So then once the driver operator states that you are clear to charge the hydrant. Uh, we never say charge the line. It's always on the radio charge the hydrant. Our universal signal is the twirl in the air or the air horn activation. Usually you'll have either the radio communications stating charge the hydrant or the air or the uh, uh, twirl in the air. But this is just a quick little rundown on how you charge, I'm sorry, how you connect your hydrant Thank you guys for watching. If you want to see more videos like these, please let me know in the description below. Love you guys. Catch you all in the next one.